Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. I'm often asked about candle charting or candlestick analysis. This is a traditional Japanese form of uh, charting. In the West, we usually use price bars, which represents the daily price action or weekly or intraday price action by a price bar, right? The tick to the left is the open, tick to the right is the close, the vertical line gives you the high and the low. Japanese version of that is called candlestick analysis, which represents the day's price action with what's called a candle, which is a much more visual, visually rich way of representing uh, the daily or the weekly price activity. We're going to talk in particular about one candle pattern called the hammer candle and also why long lower shadows can be very meaningful. We'll get to the charts here in a second. What I love about candle charting is it's a very visual form of analysis. I think technical analysis is so meaningful for so many investors, so many traders, because it really illuminates the activity in the markets. So I always thought by looking at a chart, you were looking inside the heads of all of the other investors because the price represents the aggregate of the investor psychology that's out there. Candlestick charting is very visual, so it represents the daily price action by uh, blocks, which are called candles, which are called the real body of the candle. It shows you the open to close every day. So it's very easy to glance at a chart and see whether the open was below the close or whether the open was above the close, or there was an up close or a down close, basically, because the candle looks very, very different. It's either an open candle or a clear candle or a solid candle, a, 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 a down day. But it really shows the movements of the market day to day. And it really helps you see when things change. When there's a big downturn, all of a sudden something's different. And we're starting to see that here in, uh, in late May with a uh, number, number of individual equities, even the markets uh, themselves using the S&P 500. Before we get to the charts here, I wanted to remind you, if you're this sort of thinking about technical analysis, behavioral finance, investor psychology, breadth, sentiment, that sort of things of interest to you, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate that back. Put a comment below. What do you see as the short-term read on the, uh, on the markets using candlestick analysis? Do you agree with my conclusions or not? Let me know in the comments below. Let's look at some charts. So we're going to start with the chart of Intel. And if you're not familiar with candlestick charting, essentially each day's price action is represented by what's called a candle. And I'm using a daily chart, but you could use the same mentality for a weekly chart, even a monthly chart, and also a shorter term chart, an intraday chart, like a, a five minute chart or an hourly chart represented by uh, candles. So the vertical line, just like on a bar chart, tells you the high and the low for the day. It tells you the price range for the day. Instead of a tick to the left representing the opening price, you actually use uh, the body of the candle, same with the closing price. So in an open candle, what's called a clear candle, it opened at the bottom of the candle, it closed up at the top of what's called the real body, sort of the rectangle here in the middle. A down day where the close is below the open is shown as a solid candle. So we opened here, we traded lower and closed down at the bottom. The way I always reminded people when they're just getting familiar with this form of analysis, is if it's an open candle, think of it as something open, it's it's a light, it's a, it's a balloon filled with helium, and so it floats higher. So it opens at the bottom, closes up at the top. Something that's solid, it's heavy, it's a rock sinking down in a pool, so it opens here at the top of the body and sinks down to close at the bottom. So visually, the black days in this, uh, in this chart are down closes where we close below the open. The open candles or the clear candles are up days. So you can see when there's a string of five straight trading days like we see here in early May, where every day the close is below the open. You can also see when that dynamic changes and all of a sudden we start to see some up closes. So it's a very meaningful, visually rich way of, uh, of representing the daily price action uh, for an individual stock. Now the candle I want you to look at is this one right here, which is about a week ago. This is what's called a hammer candle. And you wanna think of it as something hammering out a bottom, right? So the way a hammer candle looks is you have the open and the close near the upper end of the day's range. You have very little uh, upper shadow, and that's what you usually call the vertical line there. You can see very, very little because we basically open and close near the top of the day, but then you have a long lower shadow, right? So the range went much lower than the open and close. So think about what this day actually felt like as a trader. We opened at this point, we traded all the way down to these lows, but then by the close, we'd come all the way back up. So I think it was sort of like a V-shaped day, right? You open, you trade lower, you come back up and close more to the top. So that is, as you could probably guess, a short-term reversal signal. That tells you usually that the downside momentum has exhausted in the near term, and you're seeing accumulation. You're seeing signs of accumulation during the trading day, right? You open, price gets lower, buyers start coming in and push the price back 
to close near the highs of the day. That usually tells you the next couple of bars are most, most likely going to be higher rather than lower. And as you can see on the chart of Intel, we're recording this here on May 26. A nice update for uh, for a lot of uh, risk assets today after a nice update yesterday as well. So indeed, we're following uh, through on that hammer candle. Now, in general, how do you think about this? Well, what this tells you is the short-term um, um, momentum is most likely higher. The natural stop that's built into the hammer candle, which is really a lot of people skip this, is the lower end of that range. So, so as long as we remain above the low of that hammer, overall the you know pattern is still very much in play. It's really designed to only tell you about the next couple of bars, though. It's really not a long-term indication. So I find it's a really good thing to combine with more long-term analysis, like moving averages, like trend analysis, like other, you know, Ichimoku clouds or some sort of exhaustion technique that helps you make sense of where we're at relative to uh, this short-term dynamic. Also pay special attention when you see a hammer candle at an established support or resistance level. We'll get to that here uh, with another example in a moment. Here's a, uh, the chart of Home Depot, and you can see recently, you see a number of hammer candles, right? You can see a couple of these bars here where you open, you trade much lower, but you close more toward the highs of the day. Think about what that means. Every day we open, we trade lower, and buyers are coming in. It literally shows you the buying power that is emerging. There's another uh, candle pattern over here. If you know your candle charts, do you know what this one is? It's actually called a bullish engulfing pattern. It's when you have a big down day, you have a lower open on day two, you close at least 50% of the way through the first day's real body. That is a bottoming uh, pattern as well. So with Home Depot, you actually see a cluster of bullish candle patterns, a bullish engulfing pattern. A couple of weeks ago, in the last week, we've had a number of these hammer candles with uh, the open and close near the upper end of the range, long lower shadows that suggest that in the short term, you're seeing some buyers emerge. And now we are rallying up to the 50 day moving average once again. BSX is Boston Scientific. I wanted to highlight not necessarily hammer candles, but if you think about what hammer candles really mean, it's they are marked by the fact that the open and close are near the top uh, end of the day of the, of the trading range, but also these long lower shadows and long lower shadows indicate weakness that has then been met with additional demand, which tends to be pretty bullish. So while these are not necessarily hammer candles, look at how the lows, look at how these long lower shadows are all right about at the same price level. When you think about another way to use candlestick analysis, it's looking at the extremes, right? Here we can see with BSX that a number of trading days, three out of four in a row, all had a low, almost identical, right around $38 a share. A couple of weeks later, we had what's called the doji candle, which is basically the open and close near the uh, same level. This uh, wide range, not all the way down to the lows, but close enough. And now we're starting to see a bit of a bounce up from there. So where the lows actually, those long lower shadows, what level they're at also can have meaning. Now that I've set the stage with those couple different charts, let's look at the S&P 500 itself because we just saw a hammer candle on this chart about four bars ago, four days ago. So this is today's bar. Again, we're having a nice rally today here on uh, May 26 on Thursday with the S&P closing back or, or trading above 4,000 here for the first time in about a week and a half. But look at this candle here. This is, we had a uh, obviously a well-established downtrend for the S&P 500. Then you have this bar right here, open and close near the upper end of the range, very small upper shadow, long lower shadow that is literally called a hammer candle suggests we most likely rally in the short term from here so just the lower end of this is at uh, support remember earlier in the uh, in the video i talked about where we actually you know when you see a hammer candle where is it relative to support and resistance levels that can be important this actually this day traded right down to almost exactly to a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement level taking March 2020 to January 2022. If you take 38.2% of the way down through that range, it's right around 38.15, 38.20. And that's pretty much where the bottom of this hammer candle uh, uh, traded down to. So a hammer candle telling you short-term demand coming in, lining up with a long-term support level, that's a pretty safe bet. We get a short-term bounce at the least from there. So just to wrap up, I've mentioned a couple times it's a short-term indicator, and that is true. You know, I've always been taught, make short-term decisions with short-term data, make long-term decisions with long-term data. So seeing these uh, hammer candles emerge on charts like Intel, seeing the long lower shadows on charts like BSX and Home Depot is encouraging in the short term. Does it tell you that the entire mood is shifting from a very bearish environment to a very bullish environment? Not necessarily. You'd have to see the price follow through on those hammer candles. On something like the S&P, can we get above the high from a week and a half ago? 
follow through above those most recent swing highs? Can we get above established resistance levels? That is where a hammer candle does not become just a short-term bounce indication, but the beginning of something potentially more longer and meaningful to the upside. So that is a quick primer on candlestick analysis, a traditional Japanese form of technical analysis. And again, it's very similar to bar charts. You can use a lot of the traditional Western indicators like RSI and moving averages with candle charts, just like you will with bar charts. But visually, it can be a much more uh, engaging way of understanding the short-term dynamics. And I particularly like using them in this sort of environment when the overall trend has been bearish. And you're looking for signs of buyers coming in. You can see on these hammer candles and the long lower shadows over the last week or so that you're certainly seeing at the very least in the short term some demand come in as investors are buying in on short-term weakness. Does that materialize into something more meaningful? We have to wait for the trends to reverse to really confirm that. What do you think? Do you think that's a, a fair assessment of the S&P 500? What level are you looking at in particular? Let me know in the comments below. For Mark and Ms. Behavior, I'm Dave Keller. Stay safe. Be well. Talk to you soon.